Hello, Clixis here and welcome everyone to this week's video. Today I have decided to combine painting together with me chatting and having a chat with you. So I hope you will enjoy this video. Also, if you want, you can grab yourself a cup of tea. I actually, while I'm recording this, I have red bush tea on the side and it's boiling hot. So I might drink it in some parts of this video. And if you want, you can work on your own projects and have me in the background. I will chat a little bit about my painting process. And as you can see on the screen, um, I will share one of the paintings I did recently. And I will also have a chat and the chat will be mainly about celebrating my two year YouTube anniversary and just chatting why I started filming videos, how long it took me to film them, uh, what kind of materials I use, what I learned. And I will also answer some of the questions you have asked to me recently. So I hope this is exciting video for you. If you do enjoy these kinds of videos, please let me know in the comments and also like this video so it can reach more people. I guess let's have a chat first about the painting I'm currently doing and which you can see the process of. Uh, I needed to speed it up a little bit because this painting took me two days to create and um, to be honest with you, in the beginning I didn't like how it looked. <laughs> so. I just kind of wanted to show you all the stages in this painting and that it's not like perfect early from the beginning and there is a lot of self-doubt in between but um, I know that I can do better so I'm like kind of adding more layers to it and having like a chat with myself and I am really happy how the final result looks. So yeah, I just wanted to show you the whole kind of uh, process and all the mistakes and all the success I had with it. I think I started enjoying it more when I had like this brownish um, wall color. And uh, yeah, so this is illustration which I did for my Patreons. And uh, this will be my mon monthly exclusive print. And starting from 1st of March, if anyone is joining Curious Fox Deer for £15.50, I will send this print in A5 size together with mysterious <laughs> handmade craft paper sticker to your door. And yeah, I just kind of wanted to promote this one as well. But it's just if you want to get this print, it's possible if you are my Patreon. Other than that, it, I will not print it like for my store. It will be just exclusive print. And yeah, I hope you will enjoy seeing all the things I did for this print. And while I'm painting in the background, I just decided to have a chat. And maybe you're not like watching this video full way through, but you are doing your own things. So you can just use this as a kind of mini podcast catch up and uh, yeah I just wanted to chat a little bit and uh, chat specifically about YouTube journey and why I wanted to talk about this YouTube journey and uh, like this two year anniversary is because I want to celebrate some of the things I have achieved and I am one of the persons who is like doing a lot of things and then when you reach one of the goals, for example, like, I don't know, film for like two years or, or be present online. And when you reach that point, you're like, okay, let's move on. Let's do the next thing. And I wanted kind of to step back a little bit and slow down and look at all the victories. And uh, why I wanted to talk about this is I want to also encourage you to, especially if you are sometimes like feeling down, Please do look at your victories. I feel like taking time to slow down and um, and celebrate them. It, it's like a way to step back and see all the things in, in like from the distance rather than just jump straight to the next big thing. And 
to have like a gratitude gratitude for where you are so why i started filming and uh, posting videos online i actually wrote down three main points which i was thinking about when i started and uh, one of the things was to go outside of the comfort zone and i feel everyone should do it once in a while and not like being in the comfort zone all the time i feel if you are in the comfort zone you don't grow as much or at all so whenever you are trying something new you gain experience of course you can fail that's inevitable but i feel even like accepting the fail failures and trying new things it's important so this was like okay i'm gonna try it if it doesn't go as i think it will go it's fine i can not do it if i don't like to do it i will not do it the second point is to document my artist journey and i feel there are like several smaller points in this point and that is i really wanted to see what I have done before and have it in like visual memory form because I don't have a good memory and sometimes I, I even don't remember the things I did like I don't know six years ago or ten years ago it's like long time from now and I wanted to have like a space where I can kind of see the progress and literally see how things have changed since that moment and um, I feel like even now after two years of filming videos I can like see the things that happened and it's really inspiring for myself to see how things have changed and I have uh, a lot of vlogs and I feel vlogs are really important to me because they kind of showcase day-to-day -day life and I have like this vlog from London one and a half years ago and it was like from my graduation show in London I also have like documented um, Bologna Children's Book Fair vlog where I went there alone and it was like my solo trip and I feel it's it's really interesting to see all of those things and where where I was like that time and that period ago and how it ha where I am now and um, that was one of the things I really wanted to kind of focus on and also the third point I wrote was to grow my art business and showca showcase my work online. When um, I started filming I also opened my Etsy store. I actually opened my Etsy store one month before I started filming and I realized I don't have like any online presence. I don't use a lot of social media I uh, I think I posted on Instagram once in a while, but it wasn't like I was focusing and promoting my work. I wasn't definitely like artist with um, business gifts and uh, artist who loves to market myself. And I needed to teach these things to myself throughout the way. And yeah, this was one of the steps. I feel also when I started uh, filming videos, I also wanted to give comfort or value to viewers and also share my thoughts and knowledge and kind of bring you with me to this journey. Maybe want to encourage someone who maybe wants to have online business or online presence or just see how artists from one country is living to another country. And I feel... I still, I'm still thinking about this extra value because I want to have this um, kind of purpose in this platform and that's what I'm like still thinking about all the time, like what can I give to you and what you can get from these videos and I feel like I love to be a comfort to someone who maybe also is working alone in their room or maybe like encourage someone who is also thinking about starting something new and exciting and maybe that is like something completely out of their comfort zones which for me was like filming and showing my face in front of camera and being active on social media and like going freelance for the first time that was also scary for me and it is still scary 
I feel I, I still don't have like this comfort place where I can like just create and, and everything will resolve itself. I feel I still need to work up um, to, to live and um, do this full time. So I feel, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is the situation right now. If you are asking me how long it took me to start filming, it took me several years. So if you are right now thinking about filming videos, I would rather suggest you to just try. And if you don't like it, then, well, you will know sooner rather than later. I wanted to start in 2018. I actually recorded my first video in um, autumn of 2018. I was a Rasmus student back then. Um, and then I filmed quite a bit of videos in 2020 when pandemic started. I got my com old computer full <laughs> and it was running out of memory because I had like a lot of videos where I just filmed myself and I was painting on the side. So yeah, <laughs> I feel trying is the best thing and I think it was the hardest point. And when I started filming, I was thinking, okay, I will film one video and then I will see if I like it or not. And then I, I kind of enjoyed it and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna film like a few more. And I filmed like 10 and then I did 20 and did, then I did 30 and more and more and now I'm almost at like 100 mark <laughs> so I feel you need to really love to film and to document the journey to do this in the long run because it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of energy especially if I am like recording and filming weekly videos it's a lot of time like from the week Half of the week, I would say, is just filming videos, planning videos, doing thumbnails, um, writing descriptions, editing. It takes like half of the week already. So you need to really love to do it, to, to do it a long time. And I feel it's with everything. And um, yeah, for me right now, I can't imagine not doing it. it, it it's really exciting because uh, although I am kind of, little bit more in comfort zone now I feel everything is like changing all the time and I feel still uncomfortable and um, I'm stepping outside of the comfort zone inside this filming part <laughs> like I'm kind of uh, exploring new things and it's like infinite possibilities and learning a lot of things about myself as well and how I work and my schedule as well I wanted to also quickly chat about equipment, but um, I don't have like a lot of photos of the equipment, so I will link everything I use filming wise in the description. If you are curious, you can see it there. I'm not sure if it will be affiliate links because it, I, I don't want to add so many affiliate links into my description. I only want to add a few. So I have like Jackson's Art affiliate link. I have Printworks, which is the website I use for printing my prints. And I also have Epidemic Sound, which is the music program I'm using for music in my videos. And yeah, so the equipment will be just in, a, in the description, but without affiliate links. And uh, I think I changed only one camera throughout these two years. I started with Canon EOS 60, I think, and now I'm using Canon M50. I started using the second camera, I think, like two or three months in, and I really enjoy it, so I'm, I'm just, I'm not changing it for now. I also have a microphone, as then. It's microphone I had, like, for, I would say year and a half. I don't buy a lot of gear. I have like one tripod, which is overhead tripod, which is the most useful thing for me. I think it's Manfrotto Magic Arm. It's like the best tripod for me because I can move it and it can be overhead shots and it doesn't bother me. And um, yeah, I have like one bigger tripod if I want to record some intros and outros. And I have super small Manfrotto tripod as well. And yeah, 
few SD cards, um, three batteries in total, and that's it. I don't don't have like a lot of gears. Um, I also have like light. Yes, I have light as well, artificial light, which can I can change the temperature of the the light. You don't need to have a lot of things to film and edit, and um, it's great to invest in some bigger things and better quality things rather than to have a lot but not so great. I had before another microphone, which was a broad, I think super small one, which you can clip to yourself, but I didn't enjoy it. So now I have a bigger one and you can just put it on the tripod. I feel it's great to see what works for you if you are filming or considering to film. Uh, about video editing, I use DaVinci Resolve. It's a free uh, editing program you can download. I learned everything from YouTube videos and from FranArt. And whenever I needed to find something, I was just Googling and usually watching videos because I really like seeing visual information. It's really hard for me to process things just if it's like written or if I don't see how everything works. So I, I usually watch like videos to see how I change some things. And so far I'm like sometimes color correcting, but it's not like all the time. I'm checking if the video is in good quality. I don't add any um, corrections color wise. I also don't add almost any corrections video wise. I think I learned a few things how to cancel the background noise but yeah i think everything i learned video wise was like just self-taught and when i started filming i didn't know how to film what to film what i like to film and how to edit <laughs> so yeah that's that's that i feel if i needed to describe the overall videos i am filming there are several, several like directions. I can't just film videos and talk about art supplies. I also want to show a little bit of nature or a little bit of surrounding area or the process or the behind the scenes. I also want to share a little bit insights into my life. That's why I feel like my videos are a bit of everything. I do enjoy art supply videos because I was... Um, Maybe you know, maybe you don't. I worked in art supply store for three years. So that's where I fell in love like with chatting about art supplies and to have like a job where you just talk about your favorite art supplies or do color swatches for customers. It's exciting. So that was like the beginning why I wanted to show. I wanted to have studio vlogs and I also wanted to share my excitement for art supplies. But I feel like now I have like a bit of everything. I chat about art supplies. I do some art challenges. I do paint with me videos. I now even like posted one <laughs> video of music playlist. I know it's kind of random, but I really wanted to share the music playlist up here. Okay, so what are my future plans for this channel? Um, first things first, I want to continue filming. I feel I have found one of the things I want to do in the future. And for a long time I thought the only thing I want to do is be interior designer. Then in the ninth grade I realized, no, I don't like interior design. I will do textile. When I did textile, I realized I will not do textile. So I started doing illustration. When I went to another school, I realized, no, I don't like fine art, so I'm just gonna do illustration. Then I realized I like children's picture book illustration. Now I realized I really like filming. So things change and I'm trying to be okay with them. And uh, I feel I still have like passion for picture books, but I also want to film videos and art videos and create illustrations. So now my focus is to combine picture book illustration with filming videos and this is kind of the focus for the future. I also want to do more collaborations between different artists here on YouTube and also not like only on YouTube but also with different artists in general. I want to have like community 
in between artists and I feel it's important to find your people who support you and who can help you and you can help them and that is like one of the things I also want to kind of focus on. I also want to film like regarding the filming and specifically filming I want to film more color palette videos. I really enjoyed filming video about how to choose color palette for your art. I want to film another video which is focusing on picture book color palettes and how to choose color palette to work with for a long period of time and also for color palettes for the art challenges and also just general color mixing videos. I feel this is something exciting and I'm excited to explore it a little bit more and yeah show you my color palettes color palette inspiration for yourself, maybe some exercises, let me know what you would love to see color wise because this topic is something that excites me quite a bit as well. Also I want to share a little bit more of behind the scenes of uh, running small business. I want to show a little bit more of screen printing, a little bit more of packing things. Yeah, so these are some of the future plans. Of course there will be like Lots of different things I want to focus on. I also mentioned early in this year that I want to film bi-weekly videos, but I think now I started filming weekly videos. I'm trying to be gentle with myself because um, I don't want to also like get burnout because I know it's possible and I had it before. And uh, so far I record sometimes two videos in one week and then the next video next week I don't record videos so that way I still publish videos but I don't do it every single week if that makes sense so I'm like trying to make that kind of schedule work and uh, yeah some of the videos will be just me chatting like I do right now and painting on the site and some videos will be with more video editing involved and more camera shots. For example, the how to choose color palette for your art. It took me two full days to edit that video <clears throat> because it was full of information and also it was full with all the different shots and I was like kind of putting it all together and it took me a lot of time. But uh, some of the videos will, will take a little bit less time. So I'm trying to balance it out and post weekly videos but if it will be too much I will publish bi-weekly videos. I will try to not be so hard on myself so if I will not feel ready to publish a video I will just do it a little bit later. Okay uh, this is Q&A section. I will answer some of the questions from YouTube community tab and some Instagram questions and yeah I hope you will enjoy. The first question I have is from Katie and she asked what is something you tried and didn't work during this journey versus something you thought wouldn't work that well but did. Um, <laughs> it's quite complicated. I was trying to think what was like something I tried and didn't work and the first thing that came to my mind was uh, I think first few videos I did write inserts inside the videos and when I edited I put the inserts in but uh, I realized it takes too much time for me to do so and I also realized editing style is different for, for everyone and even though I enjoy some artists or youtubers who use those inserts in inside the clips I am not one of those persons I don't barely like even put pictures inside the videos and I just mainly focus on um, editing videos how they are and um, the thing that I thought it wouldn't work but it worked I think um, the thumbnail, bu thumbnail bubble <laughs> I started uh, doing thumbnails and adding like this bubble on top and then I wrote the names or descriptions on top of those bubbles and um, I think for for two years in a row I've been like doing that constantly and uh, it just 
it was just like a thing in the beginning, but I kind of liked how it looks. And now I am having like these thumbnail bubbles with text all the time. And it feels like such a, like the thumbnail you can see and maybe it's like immediately recognizable as my thumbnails. Well, I hope it is. Okay, so I have another question and it's from Silver Nutmeg. I love the music you use. Can you credit the artist or is it a copyright thing? So I have been using Epidemic Sound for past two years. It's a kind of subscription service and uh, it kind of uh, crosses out all the copyright. I'm using the music I'm paying for every month. And in the beginning I paid 10 pounds per month. And now I realized after two years that I can buy yearly plan which is much cheaper than buying daily like monthly plan so now i am paying approximately like seven pounds per month which is still a lot but um yeah it kind of um uh, it's the part of expense and uh, i also have now affiliate link for everyone who wants to try it out i have 30 uh, day free trial for everyone to try out and yeah, I've been enjoying the epidemic sound. I think I have spent several hours just browsing through their website and finding the right music. And I have found like quite a playlist with the music I really enjoy. And um, yeah, I already posted like the playlist uh, music list <laughs> here on YouTube as well. So yeah. And uh, I have another question, it's from Celeste, and she is asking what was your first step to getting yourself to start making YouTube videos? I feel like the first step is like actually start doing it. I think it took me the longest to just like start doing the things and I feel it's always the case when you start to do it, it's much easier, but the, the first step is the hardest and I feel just go with it and do it doing it and trying it out is the best option <laughs> um okay i have i think i have some questions from instagram so i will just quickly check out where are they okay another question uh from freckled page and it's the story of why foxes are your favorite um, this is a tricky question because I don't have like one simple answer. I remember when I did um, my second ever picture book story in 2018, I had a story about fox in rain boots and I really enjoyed just how the foxes look and also the fox color and I felt it, it kind of, when you draw nature, and have like these green brown tones when you add fox color like this orangey rusty color it just brings all the attention to to that um, particular scene and i really liked how it looks visually color wise and also shape wise and yeah starting from like 2018 i have been drawing foxes here and there <laughs> a little bit here a little bit there I also have like tea towels coming up on my store update on 10th of March and they will be fox tea towels. So yeah, I do enjoy drawing the shape of the fox and uh, I feel it's kind of part of my, one of my favorite topics to draw. I really like drawing characters. I love, I, I love drawing mott girls and I also do love drawing birds and foxes. So this is just like kind of part of my interests if if that makes sense okay i think these are all the questions and uh, before i will finish this video i also want to quickly mention that uh, because i did this illustration which you can see i'm doing for my patreons i actually got inspiration and i created a new drawing challenge which will start super soon on the first of March and it's windowsill story art challenge and if you want you can participate as well I will put the prompt list on 
this video, but you can also see the prompt list on my YouTube community tab and also on my Instagram. You can participate as well. You don't need to have social media to do so. You can do it in your own time. And yeah, I just, I feel one of the things that really brings me joy is to have a community and uh, participate in challenges together. When I did Calmtober, I really enjoyed community aspect of this challenge making and I really enjoyed not only creating all of those artworks but also seeing all the response and all the entries and so much creativity. Yeah, I feel this is like really important to me and I feel I want to create more art challenges for myself and for others. I feel art challenges are a great way to go outside of the comfort zone and also like do something especially if you feel like you are stuck in one place or you have created a block you joining like art challenges helps you to kind of get out of these things and yeah find new perspective find new themes you enjoy so windowsill stories starting on the 1st of march if you want to join my patreon i will link it down below as well uh, with that being said, thank you so much to all of my lovely Patreons who are supporting me. Your support means a lot to me and I can do what I do and film videos and uh, create art and yeah, it, it just brings me a lot of joy. And uh, if you like this video, give a thumbs up. Write in the comments down below. Mm, what should you write? Why is your favorite color of all times? And I'm just really curious, so yeah. <laughs> And I will know that you stay till the end. Okay. Bye, everyone. See you super soon. Bye.